It is a fan feedback show. We'll hear from LA Kings fans and what they have to say about Quentin Byfield, the job that GM Rob Blake and head coach Todd McClellan have done, and lots of comments on the puck track, which we saw on the local TV broadcast. All that and more on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. If you could leave a positive comment, for example, on Apple Podcasts, uh, that would be appreciated. Always enjoy the positive feedback if you have that. Uh, Of course, we're also on YouTube. Uh, Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content there. My name is Eddie Garcia. I'm your host of Locked on LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. I'm also co-host of the Puck Podcast. It's a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 16 years and of course a passionate LA Kings fan for the past 30 years. Before we get into the emails and the YouTube and Twitter comments uh, and questions, uh, there is news to pass along and it is very encouraging news from our friend of the show, uh, Russell Morgan, who if you missed out on the interview with him on Thursday, definitely check that out. Uh, but Russell was out at practice on Friday uh, and great news to report regarding the injury issues that the LA Kings have been going through recently, in particular, Kevin Fiala, Gabe Velarde, and Sean Dersey. All three participated in practice on Friday. Uh, Velarde, who went down hard in that win over the Flames on Monday, uh, was not only practicing, but was skating in his normal spot on the third line and looks like he could be back this weekend, either Saturday against the Jets or Sunday against the Blues. Sean Dersey, for the second straight day, was practicing as he continues to recover from what was believed to be a head injury uh, that caused him to miss the last six games. He was not wearing his red non-contact jersey that he was wearing the other day, um, but he was skating with the extra defenseman. That would be Jordan Spence. So looks like we might not see him over the weekend. Um, maybe not see him at least Saturday. Maybe he returns on Sunday, but it does look like he is close to returning now that he's out of that red non-contact jersey. And Kevin Fiala did skate in practice. Now, he was wearing the red non-contact jersey, but great to see him skating again with the team. Um, Bottom line, all three seem to be making good progress and things are looking very positive that all three should be back in the lineup for the LA Kings soon. And that's great news, obviously, with the playoffs on the horizon and big games coming up over the next two weeks against Edmonton and Vegas. So with that good news in mind, let's get into some of your emails. Our first email comes from Don L. He is in North Hollywood, and he wants to talk about Quentin Byfield. He says, with all the discussion about Byfield, with some uh, expressing disappointment that he's not being used at center right now, no one seems to mention one very important point. Because he's playing on the first line, Byfield is lining up against the top forwards in the NHL. All the first-line forwards on all the teams we play, including the top team superstars. He's 20 years old, playing against top-line forwards every night, and I am personally delighted with his development. If he were playing center on the bottom six, uh, I don't think he'd be developing as well overall as he is now. He can always work towards playing center over the next one or two seasons, So, uh, and it's still eventually become a top-line center, as many, as many of us hoped he will. Mark Messier started at the wing and evolved into playing center after a few seasons, and he did all right. Perhaps you can think of a couple other examples, Eddie. QB is playing against the best forwards in the league and his at his young age and seems to be doing fine. I still think he can become a standout player and perhaps even a big star. No fear, Kings fans. The kid is all right. And again, that was from Don L. in North Hollywood. And yeah, I agree with you. Um not only is Quentin Byfield, you know, playing against top flight competition, but I think just overall him playing, uh, getting top line minutes and playing with Adrian Kempe and Andre Kopitar, it, it can only help his development going forward um, and, and getting those minutes that he wouldn't get if he were playing center on the third or fourth line. Uh, I could not agree more, um, you know, going into the season. Uh, what did you expect from Quentin Byfield? For me, It was just that he took another step forward in his development. And I think there's no question that he has done that. And I think he's, he's on a good track. Uh, So I would agree with that. This comes from Chris 
Uh, he is in Carson City, Nevada. He has praise for GM Rob Blake. He says, wanted to talk about how this team was built and how it is done and how, how it has been done rather quickly. If you remember back to 2018, we were a playoff team with still a big chunk of the roster from the 2014 Cup team. Little did we know that was the beginning of the end for that group after the Kings were swept by Vegas. The season, uh, the next season, the wheels fell off and we were literally the worst team in the Western Conference. John Stevens was let go and the rebuild began. The Kings were a veteran team and also in salary cap purgatory at the same time. Looking back, Rob Blake made some amazing moves, trading Muzzin to get Jersey Grunstrom in a pick that became Bjornfoot. The next year, moving Campbell and Lewis for Trevor Moore in a pick. He was also able to move some of our bigger contracts at the time, like Martinez, Carter, and to Foley. Next few seasons allowed our younger players to come up and get experience and or develop. Looking at players like Kempe, Roy, Anderson, Lazat, and Kaliev, we also got uh, stability in our head coach with Todd McClellan. He was given time to mold the team. Then Blake even made some great additions with Arvidsson, Deneau, Edler, and Fiala. I haven't even mentioned the draft picks in recent years who are playing like Mavardi, Byfield, Kupari, Spence, and so many who are in the AHL or were used in trades. There are teams out there that have been rebuilding for a decade, it seems. Buffalo, Ottawa, Detroit, and Arizona. You look at the team today, we're four lines deep at forwards, balance on defense with off with offense and defensive-minded players, and have two goaltenders who can get the job done in, on any given night. The penalty kill and the power play have dramatically improved. Just looking back, it seems pretty impressive what this team did in a rather short amount of time. Hopefully, we can see a deep playoff run this year. If not, no reason to believe this team won't contend for years to come. Thanks to the great show uh, each and every day. Go Kings Go. And again, that was from Chris in Carson City, Nevada. Yeah, it is hard to uh, it is hard to criticize much that Rob Blake has done. I know some were upset about the the way the Jonathan Quick trade would, possibly was handled. Um, and certainly we talked about it on the episode uh, the other day. You know, if there is one misstep so far, it has been the Cal Peterson signing. Uh, so is Rob Blake batting a thousand? No, but I'll put it this way. Uh, his batting average is enough right now that I, I think he's probably an all-star. Um, and when you think of candidates for general manager of their year, uh, I honestly can't think of a better candidate than Rob Blake as far as the Western Conference teams are concerned. Now, there's definitely some people in the East uh, that, with what Boston is doing. It's hard to not just kind of automatically have their GM Don Sweeney in the running, uh, maybe like a Tom Fitzgerald in New Jersey or Chris Drury in New York with the Rangers. But I think as far as the Western Conference teams, I think Rob Blake would be at the top of my list for GM of the year. Uh, our next uh, email comes from Russ, and he did not include where he's from, so I get to make it up. And I love alliteration, so I'm going to say it's Russ in Rialto. Uh, he says, uh, do you know why Adrian Kempe's nickname is Juice? My daughter and I were wondering. Uh, short and sweet. Uh, actually, I do know why his nickname is Juice, and it's it's pretty much what you would think. There's no, there's nothing really funny about it. Um, in 2015, uh, he joined the Kings' then AHL affiliate in Manchester, New Hampshire, the old Manchester Monarchs. And uh, in his first year with them, he went on a real hot streak in the playoffs. And then there was talk about how Kempe was providing juice for the team, you know, like positive energy. And that's how he got his nickname. Uh, our next email comes from Eric D. And he's in Malaga, Spain, which is on my, uh, my short list of places I would like to visit. Uh, my wife and I, uh, got into traveling abroad later in life, and I absolutely fell in love with it. Uh, we went to Paris, London. Uh, my wife's family is originally from Croatia. We went and saw the tiny fishing village where her grandparents were from, which was amazing. I uh, went to Sydney, Australia. Uh, COVID, unfortunately, derailed us a little bit, but uh, would love to get back out there sometime in the near future. Spain, um, I'd like to go to Japan. I've always wanted to go to Japan. Italy, certainly on the list as well. Anyway, sorry. Great to hear from uh, a, a listener and a Kings fan in Spain. Uh, he says, big fan of the show and of the Kings. Just wanted to know, what is the magic number for the Kings to book their ticket to the big dance? Uh, keep up the good work and go Kings go. Uh, well, as of the recording of this show, and according to the website playoffstatus.com, the Kings magic number to clinch a playoff spot is at six. Now, that would be clinching the final wildcard spot in the West. Uh, apparently, to clinch second place, uh, the magic number is 10. And remember, the Kings have 11 games left. So clearly, it's very competitive right now. Although they did mention, again, this is playoffstatus.com, the Kings have a 41% chance of finishing in second place in the division and getting home ice advantage 
in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, by the way, I did mention my goof uh, on the show the other day with Russell Morgan. I had said the other day the Kings had 15 games left in the regular season. That is incorrect. There are 11 games left in the regular season, so the playoffs are going to be here before you know it, and I'm very excited about that. I'm sure you are too. Uh, this comes from Nick from Twitter. Uh, he's uh, LA Kings 88, and he says, Hey, Eddie, appreciate the show. Thanks for all you do. Uh, for your feedback show this week, I was thinking that Clark, Brent Clark, uh, would be an AHL bound next year. With his dominant performance this year, do you think he is primed to take a spot with the Kings next year? Can they use Jersey to get back into the first round? And could it could be a risk, but Spence seems like a solid backup plan if Clark doesn't manage to shine in camp. Is Jersey destined to stay on the right side? And does Bjornfoot have a future in LA if Gabrikov stays? Uh, all great questions, um, Nick. Uh, I would say I think Brant Clark will be on the LA Kings roster next season. I think what he showed in his brief time with the Kings earlier this season and his dominant season in the OHL, I think he's ready to be an NHL player next year. Where does that leave Jordan Spence uh, and possibly Sean Dersey? I, I think both could be valuable trade pieces that would get solid returns. I'd hate to see either of them go, but there's just too much depth on the right side. Um, Dersey, to me, is a more likely candidate because he makes more money. Um, Brent Clark's going to make $925,000 next season. Spence, $820,000. Um, and Dersey's making $1.7 million. Um, that money could be obviously used elsewhere, possibly to re-sign Vladislav Gabrikov, uh, which I think is the Kings' biggest um, chore in the offseason to re-sign him. Um, keep in mind, Alex Edler is also a UFA after this season. I think that it's likely the Kings will walk away from a player that's about to turn 37 years old. Um, so Bjorn, Bjornfoot, I think, could be an option to replace Edler on the left side on that third pairing next season. Uh, we've got more comments and questions coming up, but real quick, I need to remind you that today's episode of Locked on LA Kings brought to you by FanDuel. We are now past the midway point of the NBA season, and now is the perfect time to get in on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's a bonus bet back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to points scored to three-pointers made. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss your chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, so let's get to some of your comments from the YouTube episodes. Our first one comes from Robert Wu. He says, hey, Eddie, I have to agree with you that the first period against the Calgary Flames was the best period of the year. Amazing that the Kings have scored four times in a period in three out of their last four games. Hope Velarde isn't badly injured and that Fiala and Dursey return soon. Kings have strong tests coming up next couple of weeks as they go up against the Oilers twice and against Vegas. Also the Kraken and Jets this Sunday or Saturday. Uh, he says a rematch against the Canucks, who for some unknown reason keep beating the Kings over the past few years. These five or six games are a good test to see if the Kings have joined the Bruins, Canes, Devils, and Toronto as elite teams. Uh, there's no question uh, coming up here down the stretch, some huge games for the LA Kings. We've talked about it. You've got Edmonton twice, uh, once home, once road, and then Vegas on the road. Those games are going to be absolutely must-see TV uh, to see how the Kings can go head-to-head -head against those two teams that have played just as well as the Kings have as of late. Uh, this from General Lee Concepts, or Jen Lee Concepts. Uh, he says, uh, Eddie, am I the only one who is both awed by the Kings' new cycling in the offensive zone with all five players circling and involved in most plays, as well as suddenly feeling terror in their aggressive behavior? It's both exciting and risky. Against top teams, uh, this new play would clearly leave them subject to speedy forwards making breakouts back in their own on their own goaltenders. And although our goalies are doing what I sense is the best they can, they are left vulnerable and they rarely stop the puck. So perhaps skipping too far ahead, I wonder whom we have uh, found to match up with uh, against an Oilers team that showcases two of the best players in the league. Uh, one example, back in the 27-8 season, I remember watching the Kings play Detroit and Henrik Zetterberg quite literally skating by all five Kings players, went around the net, came out the other side and scored. In the playoffs, I saw Connor McDavid do about the same thing. Uh, his moves were brilliant, but the point is that he skated right in and scored. How are we going to stop him this time around? Uh, well, there's here's hoping 
that you have some ideas and thoughts on the matter, go Kings. Well, I mean, you're not going to stop Connor McDavid. He's the greatest player in the world, and he's having the greatest season he's ever had. So the idea is to contain him, to make things difficult on him, to be physical with him if you can, uh, and to keep him out of those high-level scoring areas. Uh, again, much easier said than done, but you got to make him work. And I, I think, you know, talking about the Kings cycling in the other team's zone, I think, you know, the cliche is the best defense is a good offense. If you make Connor McDavid work on defense, if you keep him uh, in his own zone, him and Leon Dreisaitl, well, it's hard for them to score when they're playing defense in their own end. So that's part of the King's strategy if they do, in fact, match up against the Oilers. It's just do the best you can, try and contain those guys, make it as difficult as possible, but you're not going to stop them completely. It's, you know, stop them from scoring in key moments of the game, keep them off the power play you know, that kind of thing. But uh, again, yeah, if, if the Kings can cycle the puck in the other team's zone, make them work defensively, that's uh, about as the best you can do in keeping those guys from scoring. Uh, Jeff Silverberg says, it seems to me Coach Todd McClellan is not getting the respect he deserves, and many people are not giving him credit for how well the LA Kings are doing and playing. Everyone was quick to want him fired and axed, yet it seems that no one is giving him credit for the team and where they are now. I always said, just give him time, and that goes for QB too. And again, that was from Jeff. Yeah, Jeff, I mean, Tom McClellan absolutely deserves praise. Um, if you're going to criticize him when the team isn't playing well, and I was certainly one of those people who was wondering if maybe a coaching change might be needed early in the season, then obviously you got to give him credit when the team is playing well. And I, I think that, uh, I think you're right. He's not been getting a lot of credit. And I know I still have my issues with some of the decisions he makes with the lineup, but overall you have to give Tom McClellan his due. The Kings, the Kings are playing well, and uh, obviously he has a hand in that. And like I said, I think the biggest uh, praise I would give him was the move to put Quentin Byfield on the top line. I didn't understand at the time. I never would have even considered doing that. And the fact that he and the coaching staff did that and it's been so effective, I think uh, it certainly has been one of the bigger moves uh, that uh, he's made as far as the lineup this season. Our next uh, comment comes from BS. He says, sad to see Cal Peterson not even playing in the AHL, not even playing well in the AHL. Uh, that contract will drag on the team for the next two seasons unless we can trade picks and assets to get rid of it. As uh, at least we have Copley uh, next year for cheap. I'd also love to see Corpus Allo back if his contract demands are reasonable. I think Phoenix has earned the starting goalie spot for the playoffs. Corpus Allo ready to go if he stumbles. Um, yeah, I know that uh, Russell Morgan, our guest on Thursday's show, uh, echoed those same comments. I would say I'm not ready to say that yet. Like I said, I think Phoenix Copley has been given um, – has – taken a little bit of an edge in that competition but to me it's there's still uh, lots of time to figure that out I think there's some big starts coming up now Phoenix Copley if the alternate starts can uh, continue if they continue to go back and forth one for the other um, Phoenix Copley is slated to start against Edmonton and Vegas and I think those two starts are going to go a long way in determining if it's going to be Phoenix Copley or not Corpus Allo does have one start against Edmonton which will be a big start for him as well. But to me, I'm not ready to say it's Copley yet. I think there's still time to figure it out. But I would give him a slight edge. If I had to pick today, I think I would go with Phoenix Copley as well. But as you said, Corpus all ready to go if he needs to. Uh, the next comment comes from Scott Casey. He says, Eddie, I reverse my opinion on QB uh, because the guy is 20. Remember uh, what you were like at 20. Well, I was a complete goofball. Uh, he says, I've seen good progress from him in the last 15 games as he seems to be creative with the puck and a big body in front of the net. Imagine what it'll be like in four or five years when he's a whopping 24 going into the season. I thought, man, we are deep. Imagine if we have a couple of these prospects step up and have a good year. That's exactly what's happened with Velarde and now Grunstrom. Uh, if you think about it, we have to be the deepest team in the NHL. The problem is I can't remember a year where our entire, entire division won't lose. We're 8-0-2 oh, in our last 10 and can't gain any ground or separate. It really will come down to these head-to-head -head meetings for seeding. No matter what happens, the, uh, this Kings team has had a good chance of coming out uh, of the West as anyone. Uh, go, Kings, go. Uh, yeah, I agree with everything there, except I would say maybe pump the brakes a little bit on Carl Grundstrom having a good season. He's having a good couple of weeks. Uh, if he can continue to have a good couple of weeks, then maybe we'll, I'll change my stance on that. But he's got to be a little bit more consistent, not just have a, a hot week or two. Uh, Michael V., says, uh, I totally agree with you, Eddie, that T-Mac is stupid to keep putting Zach McEwen out there instead of Arthur Kaliev. Hello, power play is down a little from where it was. Hmm, wouldn't you want to put the players in who have proven to be your best scores on the power play? Duh, Kaliev. 
Uh, fine to give Zach a game or two to acclimate, but no more, T-Mac. Just plain stupid. Still think it was a very stupid trade to let Lemieux go in the first place for many reasons. Uh, last I heard you say it's possible Ayafalo might sit out when Fiala returns. Not ever going to happen, Eddie. Ayafalo is so underappreciated by most fans. Did you notice that when he came back after his injury is when the Kings really started to surge? Not saying all because of Ayafalo, but there is no way in hell He'll ever be a healthy scratch. Mark my words, all right? We have marked your words, Michael. And look, I, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with that. All I'm saying is the way Carl Grundstrom has played of late, uh, he's made it a decision. Where before, I don't think it would have been much of a decision. I think Ayafala would have slotted in on that fourth line when Fiala returns to play on the third line. But I think if Grundstrom, and that's a big if, if he can continue to play over the next couple of weeks the way he's played the last couple of weeks, then I think there's a debate there as to whether you take him out of the lineup or not. Uh, this from CB, he says, I agree with Russell Morgan. I love quick, but he is enemy number one right now. I also have to admit that Blake did a wonderful job on the holes he filled with trading quick. Kings are loaded if they can stay healthy. You know what? I can't go with public enemy number one, um, but I will say there's no way in hell I'll be rooting for Jonathan quick if the Kings face him in the playoffs. Um, but I public enemy number one is a little strong for me. I don't know that I can go quite that far. But uh, if the Kings play the Golden Knights and Quicks in net, I'm going to hope they score 10 goals on him. Uh, we've got more comments to come, and we, uh, we're going to let you sound off about the puck track feature we've seen on the local broadcast lately. But first, thank you for listening and watching Locked on LA Kings, your team every day. Uh, but once you're finished with us, check out Game to Game NHL. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NHL with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game, a Locked On NHL, available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. We had lots of comments, uh, both emails and uh, you, uh, the YouTube comments, about the puck track being used recently on the LA Kings uh, local TV coverage. If somehow you didn't see this, um, they basically used the technology to highlight the puck during power play and penalty kill situations, the puck didn't glow, but it was kind of highlighted a bit using the technology. Um, there would be a, a trail on the puck on uh, shots and some of the passes. Uh, players' names are also kind of superimposed over their heads. Uh, so let's start with the email comments on this. This is from Dave O in Long Beach. He says, I'm not sure who this is for. Longtime fans can easily follow the puck based, based on player movement. The tracker adds no benefit with this. Perhaps new, younger fans might like it, but is it worth pissing off the vast majority of viewers? I don't think so. Just keep it on when showing a replay of a goal if it is needed. Otherwise, keep it off. Uh, this from Robert Muller. He says, hardcore hockey fans will generally not like the puck tracking feature, but those who are rather new to the game would probably like it because it's easy to lose track of where the puck is. Uh, Mike in Carson City says the techno they are trying out looks just like it's trying to justify someone having a job. It's horrible. Half the time, the black lines look like a broken stick laying on the ice. Then you add the name above the player's heads, and now you're staring at the names and not following the puck anyway, so it defeats the purpose. I realize they're trying to gain new fans, but this is not the way. How do you get a newbie fan to fall in love with hockey? Very simple. You take them to a couple of games in person. My wife could have cared less about watching hockey for 10 plus years. I finally took her to two games last year, one in San Jose, one at Crypto. Now she has a Kopitar jersey and has watched every game with me this year. And I couldn't agree with you more, Eddie. Kaliev needs to be in the lineup every game. He's 6'2", 210 pounds. He and McEwen are the same size. And Artie forechecks like a madman the last couple of games and had an assist in each game. Both Kaliev and Grunstrom are gifted shooters. Put Kapari in the middle of the two for the last 10 games, and you just might have something special for the playoffs. Well, I couldn't agree with you more on that last point, uh, Mike. And and uh, from what I understand, it looks like Zach McEwen's going to be in the lineup on the fourth line on Saturday against Winnipeg. Uh, this is from Frank in Rancho's Palace Verdes. He says, good afternoon. Got to say, I really dislike the puck, black tail, and the name badges. It's bad enough that the program directors during the power play love to use the ice level behind the net camera angle. Uh, now this, big distraction, and sometimes looks like as if a broken stick is on the ice. Also, Kaliev and Spence definitely need more to be more consistent, get more consistent ice time. Kings are looking really good. Uh, also a smart move, replacing Byfield with Arvidsson on the power play. Uh, take care. I've heard a lot of people commenting that it does look like the broken sticks. I've heard many people say that. Uh, the Big Lebowski chiming in. He says the black streak Bally's is using in the last few games is ridiculous. Instead of following the puck, I'm following the line and actually lose sight of the puck. 
Been watching hockey now for almost 40 years, and I've seen pucks glowing, shots being measured for speed, and now streaks. Why do non-hockey folks think that we real hockey fans uh, can't see the puck? It's really insulting and damaging to the game. Leave our sport alone. Uh, Mike P says puck track is horrible. It looks like broken sticks on the ice and Santiago Garcia. One of my cousins says uh, puck tracker is horrible and messes with the view. I know that uh, I saw on Twitter that both Jim Fox and Alex Faust, the two broadcasters for the LA Kings on television um, tweeted out that they would like feedback on what we uh, thought about the, uh, the technology. And I did scroll through the comments and as you might expect, those comments we're very similar to the comments that uh, we have seen on our show. So uh, if they're really listening to the fan feedback, I find it very difficult to believe they will be going forward with the, the puck track because it seems like it's almost universally not liked. Uh, coming up on Monday's show, we're going to recap the Kings two games from over the weekend. Saturday, 1 p.m. afternoon game against the Winnipeg Jets. I will be out at Crypto.com Arena for that one if anybody wants to say hello. Uh, and also Sunday night, the Kings are hosting the St. Louis Blues. So on Monday's show, recapping both games, the LA Kings will be playing over the weekend. Obviously, I want to thank you guys for all of your comments, your feedback, your emails. Uh, obviously, we wouldn't be able to have this show uh, if you didn't take the time to do that. So thank you. And I do think it's important to have a, a show every week to give you guys a chance to um, tell us what you think about the LA Kings because we're we're all in this together as Kings fans. And I, I like to hear what is on the mind of our of our listeners and our viewers out there. If you would like to send an email for a future feedback show, the email address is lockedoneddie at gmail.com, E-D-D-I-E, lockedoneddie at gmail.com. We're also on Twitter at Locked on LA Kings and on Instagram at Locked on LA Kings as well. I am Eddie Garcia. Thank you, as always, for listening and watching Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on Monday after hopefully a couple of big wins by the Kings. And always, go Kings go.